Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're returning again to Anthony Norvell and a very different discussion than the other lectures I've covered by Anthony Norvell. In his book, Occult Sciences, he has a chapter where he discusses how to astrally project and what the benefits are. I haven't really dedicated too many episodes on astral projection. There is a lot of great literature on astral projection, and there's some great YouTubers that have some very good content. Neville Goddard talks about astral projection. It's an amazingly fascinating subject. I have not been very good at it, only in limited experience, and I can't do it on command. I can do it sometimes, it just happens. Aaron Abke has some good videos that I followed and he helped me to do it. And there are some other great teachers out there. The Robert Monroe's in the world and the Robert Monroe Institute certainly talk about it. And there's some other great books, but this is just an interesting chapter. I really enjoyed it. And it's interesting to see how Anthony Norvell discussed astral projection from his book, Occult Sciences. How to achieve astral projection and its benefits. Man exists on more than one plane of consciousness. He possesses the mind, the physical self, known as the body and a spiritual identity called the soul. However, there is another invisible entity within man and this is his etheric double or astral self, which is capable of being projected during sleep and having experiences that are remembered when the person awakens. During the dream state, this astral self may enter other dimensions of time and space and have experiences which the conscious mind may recall when awake. This astral self may contact other living persons or those who have entered the spirit world where they exist as thought entities. The astral self may traverse the dim corridors of time and probe the mysteries of past centuries and consort with people who have left their mark upon the sands of time. Such astral journeys are accomplished by willing the astral self to visit certain periods of history of different countries just before going to sleep. And during the sleep state, the astral self projects outward into these other dimensions of time and space. The mystery of reaching the astral regions. Many times, these astral flights can occur while the person is in the state of reverie, between sleep and waking when the soul has the ability to project itself to distant places and be aware of the events transpiring there. The great mystic Swedenborg tells of how he sat in his study one day and had such an astral flight to a distance of 300 miles and witnessed a tragic fire in which several people were killed. This was in the days before the telephones or telegraph and there was no way for the mystic to know if this vision was accurate. The next day news came that at the exact moment Swedenborg had his vision of fire had actually occurred just as he had described it to his household members after his astral vision. Historically, we know that many people have had this gift of astral projection when they were able to tap some invisible wavelength and be aware of sights, sounds, and events that had occurred in the past or that would occur at some future date. The invisible astral realms may be explored by man. It has now been proved scientifically that these invisible dimensions of time and space known in occultism as the astral realms may be explored by man and harnessed to perform their miracles for him. To see how invisible forces can exist in the dimensions of time and space not normally visible to the physical eye, consider the miracle of how television works. When a television picture is released into the ether waves, it ceases to exist as a third dimensional object. It enters the invisible fourth dimensional plane where it obeys laws that pertain to that domain. That projected picture may circle the globe and go on forever vibrating an invisible space undetected by the human eye. How man's soul may probe these astral mysteries. Man's mind that invented the wonders of television telephone, radio, and spaceships can be used as the instrument to probe these astral mysteries 
and perceive astral forms on the screen of his mind. Man's soul, which bears the divine imprint of God, may traverse the invisible interstices of time and space with apperception to bring into focus distant times and places. When man's conscious doubting mind sleeps, his astral body may ascend majestically into the stratosphere of divine miracles and journey backwards or forwards through the dim corridors of eons of time, knowing secrets and mysteries that are denied to those who lack faith in such cosmic miracles. How a woman had an astral projection to a past event that she did not know had occurred. A lecture member in New York City once told me after class on astral projection of an amazing experience she had, which proved to her that such a thing did exist. She had a dream one night that she was flying through time and space and she suddenly found herself in a humble peasant home in what appeared to be Ireland about 50 years before. There she saw herself as a child in a crib with a man and woman who appeared to be her father and mother. She awakened thinking she had a dream which was not very accurate for her own father and mother were still very much alive and were of Polish descent, not Irish. However, the dream persisted in its vivid reality for some days and she confided the details to her mother and father. It was only then they admitted to her that the girl they called their daughter had been born to a couple in Ireland who were killed in an airplane crash in the early days of aviation. And they had adopted her when she was still an infant. All the great geniuses of history have had this astounding power of astral vision and the ability to project their etheric doubles to invisible time and space. When they probed mysteries that had not been revealed to mankind before. How you may achieve astral projection into new dimensions of time and space. There are four stages to the achieving of true astral projection. One, the first stage is the conscious attempt to put your mind into a state of trance-like suspension while you still retain control of your faculties. Lie on your bed in the position of sleep, close your eyes, and go into a dreamlike state where you will yourself to go to sleep with an invocation you can make up or you may use these words. I now command my etheric double to obey my orders and release my soul so it may probe other dimensions of astral time and space. I now breathe in slowly controlling my body's and brain's functions, slowing down my body's metabolism and achieving suspension of my normal conscious faculties. I enter a dreamlike sleeping state in which my soul shall exteriorize and ascend into the astral realms. I retain full awareness of my experiences in the astral and when my soul returns to my body, I command it to reveal to me the mysteries it has probed while on its astral journeys. 2. The second stage consists in the actual act of willing the soul to rise and be liberated from the bonds of the physical material body. This is done with a continuation of the deep breathing until such a state of drowsiness has been attained that you feel as if you are about to drift off into sleep. Then command the soul with a definite order to ascend vertically and prepare to leave your body. Visualize your etheric double like your physical twin rising like vapor or mist and floating off into time and space. At this stage, your soul will no doubt experience a sensation as if you were flying through space. This motion may be like a spiraling upward action, and when it achieves sufficient momentum, the soul attains an upward position and at this stage leaves the body tied to the physical body by its etheric umbilical cord. Many people report that in this stage of exteriorization, they can see their own bodies lying on the bed in a state of seeming sleep. 3. When you have achieved the complete exteriorization of the soul and are truly out of the gravity pull of your body, you will then experience a sensation as if flying through time and space. At this stage, you may have a kaleidoscopic view of beautiful scenes in glowing colors of different countries, past ages, historical processions, all passing through your consciousness with astounding rapidity and force. This hodgepodge of astral visitations may represent several centuries of experiences 
for the soul in one second can have a million sense perceptions of sights, sounds, and colors that represent a century of living. Just as they say a drowning man sees a pass in review his entire life, so too the soul may have in such astral projections a perception of events that took a century to occur. In your first astral projections, which will seem like vivid technicolor dreams, do not attempt to remember too many facts. Let the dream sequences pass one after the other, not trying to hold on to them until you have achieved more experience in willing the events that you wish to occur on the astral planes. Later, you can regulate these astral visions, recall them when you awaken, and delete all the unimportant details that you do not wish to review. 4. The process of interiorization or returning the soul to the prostate physical body is the last stage of astral projection. This return will be very much under your own conscious direction and will remind you of dropping from a great height in a dream and landing with a startled feeling that awakens you. This astral interiorization may occur suddenly and you will awaken feeling you have had a deep mystical dreamlike experience in which your brain will be crowded with exciting events that occurred on the astral planes. You may have had visions of persons in history, people who have been dead for centuries may have appeared to you and talked to you. You may see the astral images of your own father or mother or other relatives who have passed on, and they may relay information to you of a valuable nature. Their astral selves still exist in another dimension of time and space as disembodied thought entities or spirits, and there is no reason why your soul should not commune with theirs. How a man received valuable financial information from his father. A man in my New York lecture group, Ralph K., after having received instructions in astral projection, told me of an amazingly accurate experience that he had while he was out on the astral planes. Ralph K. had been having some financial problems, for his father had died leaving no will, and the estate, which was rather large, was being contested by several distant relatives. Ralph K. talked to his father just as if he had been there in person. He told him of the problems he was having and asked, Dad, why didn't you leave a will? His father's face showed amazement, and he replied, Why, son, I did leave a will. I gave it to your Uncle Bill to keep in his bank vault, and if anything happened to me, he was to give it to you and mother. Bill was the dead father's brother, and he had died soon after his brother. When Ralph K. returned to consciousness from his astral vision, he remembered clearly everything his father had told him. He immediately went to his aunt's home and asked her for the papers that were in her dead husband's vault. She gave them to him, and there, just as the father had told him, was the will. 5. You may, during your periods of astral flight, use this time to advantage to gather information or to visit places that you would like to see, such as foreign lands and world-famous buildings like the Parthenon in Athens, the Taj Mahal in India, or the sacred shrines in Israel. If you wish to take such astral flights, give these instructions to the soul as you go into the trance-like state that precedes exteriorization. You might even write down the places you wish to visit and then let yourself drift off into the astral regions where your soul will be able to propel itself to the places you have chosen. Many times you will not be able to control the astral journeys, but your soul will take you on a trip that you did not plan. When you awaken, you may feel that you have had a very vivid dream and everything will seem real. And you will recall people, costumes, places of interest you visited, just as if you had actually taken a tour of those places in person. How a woman visited the pyramids in Egypt while on an astral flight. A lady I once knew who had studied these laws of occultism pertaining to astral flight had a conscious desire to visit the great giant pyramid of Giza in Egypt. She gave her mind instructions of what she wanted and exteriorized her soul, which took her back in time and space to the early days of the pyramids. She seemed actually to be living in the days when the pyramids were being built. She saw kings buried there. She visited the king's chamber deep inside the pyramid and saw the strange hieroglyphics written on the walls. She seemed to know the entire history of the pyramids from that hour or so of astral flight. 
When she returned, she wrote down a careful description of what she had seen. Two years later, she had an opportunity to actually visit Egypt and go to see the pyramids. She entered the pyramid through a long stone encased tunnel that led to the king's chambers, and there she encountered the exact setting she had seen in her astral flight. 6. Astral Journeys Often occur without your conscious volitional knowledge. It seems natural for everyone to have some of these astral experiences, even without conscious effort. You will know when you have an astral journey during sleep from the experience will seem like a dream in which everything takes on an aura of absolute reality. You will dream this series of sequential events just as though they were actually occurring in life. You may awaken suddenly if some slight noise causes the soul to snap back into the body, and then you will recall vividly the events of your astral journey. You may wish to continue the flight into other dimensions. You can then close your eyes and project yourself back into the astral, where you may continue the thread of astral activity just as though there had been no interruptions. A woman who had an astral prophetic dream of marriage. This kind of astral projection occurred to Wanda P., a young lady who had taken our classes in occult sciences in Carnegie Hall. She consciously projected herself out into the astral realms one night, asking for general experiences that might reflect her life in the future dimensions of earthly time. She had a most pleasant astral flight in which she saw herself at a great ball in a costume of the 19th century at a place which seemed to be in the heart of old Vienna. She saw crystal chandeliers, magnificent tapestries, and paintings on the walls. An enormous gathering of men and women in costume were doing a beautiful Viennese waltz. She danced with a handsome young man who seemed to be of noble birth, and there was romance between them. This dream did not occur to Wanda P. again, and she forgot it in a few days. However, three weeks later, she was invited to a party at a friend's home, and there was a gay young group of men and women dancing. Suddenly, with the playing of rock and roll and the latest dance craze on the pickup, she thought of her astral dream, and she said to herself with a little amusement, I wonder if this was where I'll meet my astral prince. As she thought, this music suddenly stopped, and as if in a dream, she heard the strains of a Viennese waltz, which one of the young people had put on. Then things happened which gave her a feeling she had lived through that same experience before. A young man came up to her and bowed with a mock courtly genteur and asked her for a dance. She looked at him in amazement, for his features were those of the young man of her astral romance. Wanda P. felt instinctively that this was the beginning of something wonderful, for she had the feeling that the astral vision had been in some manner prophetic. Time bore this out, intuitive feeling, for within three months the young man did indeed propose marriage to her, and once again she had the feeling of being suspended in time and space, going through thrilling events of her astral romance. She accepted his proposal and had a June wedding, thus completing the last stage of the romance which had been projected by her astral vision. 7. You may use the astral projection for other purposes than merely taking journeys into distant time and space. You may utilize this power of soul projection to reach the minds of others during periods of sleep. This is achieved by consciously selecting the person you wish to visit during astral projection. Mentally decide what you want to say to the person and rehearse it, just as you would a speech you are going to deliver before an audience. Then, mentally see the face of the person you want to visit astrally and talk to that person consciously, holding his face in your mind as you drift off into sleep. Your soul will be on the same wavelength or vibration as the person's soul, and you may have no conscious recollection of visiting him astrally, but his soul will have an awareness of the words you have projected and the thoughts you wish to convey. How one woman used astral projection to win back her husband's love. Therese R. was a 45-year-old woman in my New York lecture group who had lost her husband's love to another woman. He had told her that he loved this woman and wanted to divorce so they could be married. They had two children, a 15-year-old boy and a 20-year-old girl, already married. For the sake of her son's future, Therese R. did not want to go through a divorce. She also loved her husband and did not feel it was her fault that he had lost his love for her. When Teresa R. learned about astral projection, she decided to try an experiment. 
first night she used astral projection to her husband in which she presented all the arguments in favor of their staying married before going to sleep she mentally told him how she loved him dearly and how she understood his infatuation for another woman but did not feel he should break up his home on her account she pleaded with her husband to think of their young son's future and not to divorce her the next night she drifted off again and she and her husband seemed to be walking down a shady country road holding hands they stopped walking and her husband took her in his arms and whispered to her don't worry terry everything's going to be all right again with us she awakened with a wonderful feeling of joy and felt that this was somehow a prophetic astral dream within two weeks she and her husband visited an aunt who lived in new jersey the aunt's home was in the country and as they were driving down a lane on the way to the house her husband suddenly stopped the car took her hand in his pulled her closer to him then as she listened in amazement he said don't worry terry everything's going to be all right i realize now you're right what i feel for Anne is only infatuation it's you i really love have always loved this type of prophetic astral projection is very common people have had astral projections of future events that turned out to be accurate one woman dreamed there was a disastrous fire in her home she thought of it just as another bad dream and promptly forgot about it in two months time while she was away faulty wiring caused a fire that half destroyed her home tragic airplane crash seen in astral projection a man who was in my lecture group had an astral projection that an airplane he planned to take was in an accident everyone aboard was killed as he traveled a good deal by plane he was puzzled and did not know which airplane his dream implied would crash so for two weeks he traveled only by train one morning on the flight from new york to washington the plane he would normally have been on did indeed crash exactly as he had foreseen in his astral dream and all aboard were killed you may experience such astral prophetic dreams and some of them may appear ridiculous and impossible of fulfillment but you should never disregard such astral warnings for there is a cosmic intelligence that knows all events scheduled to occur in the future and these astral dreams may be warnings to you a summary one the three planes of consciousness on which man exists and how he may enter them at will to travel in astral flight two man's soul may probe these astral planes at will and during sleep actually visit these historic sites three how to achieve the first four stages of astral projection and project the soul out into invisible space four how you may gather valuable information on astral planes and visit ancient countries in other centuries five how to reach the minds of other people during astral projection while you sleep six how one man received valuable information about an important will from his astral projection when his father came to him and told him of the secret hiding place of the will seven how one woman was able to visit the ancient pyramids of egypt and accurately know about the entrance to the king's chamber eight how the soul has astral dreams that are in reality projections into the astral realms and often prophecy events nine how one woman had a prophetic astral dream in which she saw the face of her future husband whom she was later to meet at a party 10 how one woman used astral projection to win back her husband's love after he had told her he loved another woman and 11 how one man was saved from death in an airplane crash because of a prophetic astral dream in which he saw the accident now my own opinion is that anthony norvell is confusing astral projection with just vision i believe that you can have the ability to remote view any point in time and space if you really start to become adept at remote viewing all of time and space is available to you check out the farsight institute and other credible remote viewing organizations and you can see the effect of this i don't think that you're necessarily leaving your body but in some cases you are i think that there is something actually happening when you leave your body there's a cord that's attached i hear a sound it's like a pop one of the techniques that aaron abke suggests which really helped me is i would always try to listen to music and that doesn't work for me so i'd sit and listen to a sound kind of focus on the sound a kind of a high-pitched sound and then there would be a pop 
and I would find myself outside of my body. I highly suggest you read the book Mastering Astral Projection by Robert Bruce and Brian Mercer. It's a 90-day guide, and there are some terrific exercises that you can do. A lot of people struggle with this, and this is designed so that you can go through the process of remembering your astral projections and truly feeling yourself leaving your body. The technique that really worked for me from that book is kind of climbing a rope while you lay in bed and you envision yourself pulling yourself up a rope and eventually you find yourself leaving your body. I think Anthony Norvell is discussing quantum jumping a little bit. What I'm trying to talk about in the quantum surfing and quantum jumping meditations is on some levels sort of astral projection into a future timeline. And then what happens, you solidify and pull yourself into that time stream. So with quantum surfing, you can really envision certain events happening in your timeline. I don't know if that's actual astral projection, i.e. you're leaving your body, or if it's just a way that you can become aware of the quantum field. Who knows? And in many cases, it's probably not important as to what's happening just being a loci of your own awareness and studying it, writing it down. If you go through these experiences, then you need to have a journal that you regularly use and write down because you'll or forget this stuff. A lot of times when you have really amazing experiences in your dreams that are related to astral events, you'll think, oh, I'm never going to forget that. And then two days later, you cannot remember it. It seems like the the higher level of conscious experience that you have, the more easy it is to forget. So I highly suggest that you do a diary. If you don't like writing stuff down, which a lot of people don't, then I suggest recording a video to yourself or a message to yourself about what you experienced. When I've had really clear astral projection experiences, it does not appear like a dream. It is very vivid. It's a vivid sort of dream, not dreamlike. If that helps you to understand the distinction that I've personally experienced. I've kind of held off on doing astral projection episodes because there's so much material about it and everybody's a little bit different, but there's something to it. And so I would love to get your experiences with astral projection. Do you astrally project? How did you first learn how to do it? Is there a particular author or meditation technique that you use that help you to actually project? Do you have any books or literature that you can recommend? One of the interesting things I've tried is a headband, an astral headband, which helps to separate my body from the etheric body. Maybe that was psychosomatic. I don't know, but it kind of worked. And there's some other things that you can do out there that are pretty interesting. And there's research about diet and exercise that can influence your ability to astrally project. All of it is interesting. Let's treat the comments like a laboratory. Put a like on this video so that other people can get this information. And we'll treat this kind of like a laboratory. There is no true one way to astrally project. But clearly, from this literature and the people that I've met and my own personal experiences, I believe something is really happening, that you're really leaving your body and you're entering into an awareness, into a field. And there's a multiple different ways to talk about this, to examine it. And so all we can do is share our own experiences and together we can come to sort of an agreement as what's really happening. That may take some time, but I do believe as we move into the new earth, our ability to leave our bodies is going to be be a part of this new existence that we're entering into and we're just learning how to use this amazing ability that will allow us to travel through time and space and to communicate with others mentally in the dream state. So let me know what you think. In any case, all episodes can be found at therealityrevolution.com. I love you all. I am projecting love and bliss to everybody that's listening to this podcast. I am so thankful and grateful to everybody that listens. It means so much to me. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.